Money's scary. I see a lot of people struggling with how to manage their money. They aren't keeping track of how much money is coming in and how much is going out. Most kids don't know how to handle money. I'm a big spender, not much of a saver, and I think if I had seen something modeled differently earlier, then I probably would have a different relationship with money. I think World of Money gives them that basis, that financial literacy that they need. World of Money is a youth financial education training institute. It operates Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.45 in July of each year. We go in in the morning, we meet with our classroom leader. Each day is different and each day has a theme and focus. So some days we'll be talking about banking, other days we'll be talking about stocks and bonds. I did learn a lot about credit scores. 401ks. Gaining interest on money, making your money work for you. How to save your money. Checkings accounts and savings accounts. And yeah, how to live a better life. Money. Is William and Law. Handling money is a big responsibility and it should be held in the hands of a responsible person. Hi, my name is Rachel. I feel like I just graduated from business school, <laughs> like real university business school. Just having role models like that come and share their knowledge with us is one example between, you know, learning, gaining success, and then giving back. And it's just a straight, long sign. Also, one of the cool things that our students learn is Mandarin Chinese. The five tenets of World of Money is learn, earn, save, invest, and donate. This helped me become more aware of how much I'm spending and how much I'm saving and how much I'm giving. It's more about, yes, you had an opportunity to earn the money. Now, what do you do to improve the lives of those that are around you and, you know, the future generations? So you need to give us your resources, whether that's money or your time, and that's more important than anything. Oh! Oh! We have visited the White House uh, about three times. Oh, Our young mogul board of directors joined me as I testified on Capitol Hill to talk to Congress about financial education. Oh! We've opened or closed the NASDAQ Stock Exchange four times. We were on CNBC, we have been on MSNBC, we have appeared on ABC, NBC. I feel like financial literacy is one of the key components in life. Um, no matter what career path you choose, you will definitely have to encounter finan uh, finance or any type of financial uh, components in your life, such as you know whenever you're making a, your first purchase for your home, which was discussed during the, um, the workshops. Yeah, yeah, hey. Moguls and young moguls, I dare you to become financially successful. Miss Lamb grooms us to be ambitious, and I think that the tools that she gives us at World of Money are helpful in making sure that those ambitions can be sustained. After becoming a billionaire, I will invest my money in charities to build schools worldwide that will teach finance. It's an amazing program. It's done so much more than just teach me about money. It's taught me about being professional, about working hard, about success. It's worth the time and worth the energy, and I think that your children one day will thank you for it. Welcome to the 2020 fifth annual World of Money Youth Business Pitch Competition sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathways Initiative. I'm Shante Blackwell, co-chair of the World of Money Leadership Council. The mission of the Leadership Council is to raise awareness for World of Money by creating partnerships with key individuals and organizations to maximize resources that further the program's expansion. Today, representing seven states, eight brilliant youth finalists will pitch a wide range of businesses from gardening, education, beauty, social impact, and sustainability. Each are very excited to have earned this opportunity. Please share this broadcast on your social media with your families and friends. Our young entrepreneurs are competing for cash prizes to invest in their business. Third place, $1,000. Second place, $3,000. And first place earns $5,000. Amazing. Before we begin our exciting global competition, kindly welcome the founder and executive director of the world of money, Sabrina Lamb. Money 
and entrepreneurship had the same influence when your ancestors were born and will continue shining like the sun when your great grandchild reaches their senior years. Hello, I'm Sabrina Lamb, the founder and the CEO of the World of Money. Entrepreneurships, entrepreneurs, simply and broadly, are those who provide a product or a service of benefit to themselves, to others, and to the world. The first entrepreneurs can be traced back 20,000 years ago in New Guinea and in countries in Africa, all throughout the continent and throughout the world. Today, Entrepreneurs are the cornerstone and are the engines of every successful economy. Entrepreneurship is still a powerful tool for financial security and wealth creations. Representing seven states today, you will applaud our eight brilliant young entrepreneurs as they present their business to our panel of judges competing for up to $5,000 in cash prizes. No one climbs a mountain alone, and today is no different. So for the dedicated efforts of the World of Money Leadership Council and J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathways team, I say thank you so much. And to our eight finalists of the World of Money 2020 Youth Business Pitch Competition, Online, today is your first step towards your entrepreneurial life. I know that others will say your name. And with unlimited victories to experience, your futures are very bright. We're already very proud of each of you. Today is another treasured moment that you will remember forever. Now let's begin. Please welcome Deborah Langford, representing our sponsor, Advancing Black Pathways at J.P. Morgan Chase. Hello, my name is Deborah Langford, and I serve as an executive director managing business development on J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathways program, also known as ABP. ABP focuses on strengthening the economic success and foundation of Black communities. To get there, we are focusing on three areas. Education, invest in developing next generation skills and amplifying job readiness and career preparedness for students and experienced hires. Careers, create a pathway to increase opportunities for talented executives by building on the work of our Advancing Black Leaders Initiative and wealth. Help Black people realize their dreams through home ownership, growing their savings and investments, and supporting their entrepreneurial endeavors, which absolutely aligns with today. We are so proud to partner with World of Money, whose mission is to empower our youth with a sound financial education and to bring the first World of Money virtual youth business pitch competition to you. I am super excited to serve as a judge today and hear all of your pitches. Everyone watching, you can learn more about Advancing Black Pathways at www.jpmorganchase.com forward slash ABP. And once again, congratulations to all the contestants and your families for helping you make it this far. And good luck. Thanks, Deborah. Joining me now for a virtual fireside chat, I have two very special guests. Mr. Corey, who started Mr. Corey's Cookies at six years old because he was sick of taking the bus to school and wanted to buy a car. Hi, Corey, and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. You. And we have Alton McDowell, a passionate mentor of young entrepreneurs who heads the Technology and Disruptive Commerce Group at J.P. Morgan Chase. Welcome, Alton. Great. Thank you and happy to be here. Now, this is going to be fun. Alton, tell us the audience a little bit about yourself. 
Great, thank you. Um, my name is Alton McDell. I am a managing director in JP Morgan at our commercial bank. Uh, I co-head a group called Technology and Disruptive Commerce. I know that's a mouthful, but mainly we focus on fast growing businesses that start maybe at $20 million, $5 million and scale up to you know multiple billion dollars. Um, and what we are meant to do is we are trying to help entrepreneurs look around the corner thinking about what their business will be like as it moves from these kind of really important milestones of like 20 million to 30 million to 50 million to 100 million of sales. Because obviously all of those things are really important milestones and they actually come with their own challenges as well. So that's what we try to do. We try to help entrepreneurs really build the best business they can. Amazing. So this is going to be an additional great conversation. Uh, your professional wisdom and experience. Corey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Mr. Corey. I'm the CEO and founder of Mr. Corey's Cookies. And I started a cookie company when I was six years old and we ship internationally. Excellent. Now, Corey, everyone is at home thinking about a business. Don't know whether that business will be successful. When did you know that you were on to something with Mr. Corey's cookies? Um, well, I knew I had something with the cookie business once, basically, I saw that everyone started buying cookies. We were at events. People <laughs> loved them, took photos, um, videos. We also, when we were basically um, on TV shows, multimedia, and all over. So I knew we had something special there. Just to add to that, that's how it tends to start as well. You know, you tend to find entrepreneurs who they literally stumble upon a, I have a great idea. Um, consumers love it. And all of a sudden I have this business, maybe I didn't expect it to scale as quickly. And now you get into this interesting point of, wow, how do I now scale a business, make sure it grows and make sure it grows profitably and then continue to grow it, which that's a very different set of muscles from when you're selling the first, call it 10 cookies to all of a sudden when you're selling 10,000 cookies. And as a banker, that's one of the things we try to help entrepreneurs do. How do they scale the business in a way they can continue to grow? Well, what are some of the challenges that you experience as an entrepreneur? Um, well, the biggest challenges about being an entrepreneur and a teen entrepreneur is not everyone taking you serious because, you know, you're a kid. <laughs> um, also funding, too. It's very hard to start something when you have like zero dollars to start it with. And something you to new to you, and you don't really know everything about the business, the market, what you're selling, what you have to do, and you have to do a lot of research and a whole lot of stuff before you can actually get your first product and your first sell out there. So it's a lot of stressful things. What do you wish you had known earlier? Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I would like to learn basically how to make a profit, um, profit and loss, um, basically different ingredients, where to get the ingredients, <laughs> how to buy them in bulk. Um, yeah. Also having a business bank account, because when we first started, we always put up money in like our personal bank account. And we never knew which was a profit, which is like, you know, which was everything. So it was very confusing. <laughs> so that was like a big thing we had to learn. No, that, that, no that, that's a very good point, because I mean, when I talk to especially younger entrepreneurs, one thing that is important to think about is when you're starting your business, you have to understand, well, how much does it cost me and how much am I charging? Because if it costs me a dollar to make and I'm selling it for 75 cents, that's a business that won't stay around for a very long time because yeah. what we call is you're funding 25 cents a burn, which yeah. unless you are, unless you're ultimately wealthy, you got to make money in these things. So yeah. having a good understanding about my cost structure, also mm -hmm. what we call margin, how much yeah. I charge for something versus how much it costs. How do I expand the margin? Knowing yeah. your customer. If your customer pays a dollar for your cookies and all of a sudden I'm selling from 100 to 1,000 cookies, well, maybe they'll maybe they'll pay a dollar 25. Like you have to know your customer so well in regards yeah. to which business you do that you have this thing, this ability to figure out, well, can I charge them more? And I think- Yeah, it's a really hard thing to do too. Yeah, because when you have, when we first had our, <laughs> when we first started selling cookies for a dollar each, we were um, not making any profit. And then we had to like, we had someone who helped us make a profit. And then we had to go from $1 to like five dollars or three cookies and people were like what how are we doing this this is crazy <laughs> and then no one understood but it was like we have to do this to make a profit we're not gonna survive any longer so now we're 29.95 for two dozen so it's pretty yeah. good customers like the product and plus you're buying because it's natural and organic too so you have to know your market and who you're selling to you can't sell to people who 
don't really, you don't want to buy that kind of product. You have to find your market niche and who you're going to sell to. Corey, how do you leverage your personal network to support your business? And how, how important is that? Well, basically having a large network is very important because you want to know how to have like a lot of huge connections. You know, you want to call somebody for help, you call somebody for help. If you need someone with marketing, you go just call someone or email with marketing. That's why it's good to go to events, um, you know, different marketing events too. Uh, what else? Are there? Like different, you know, parties, crowdfunding parties and everything. And you meet new people. It's pretty amazing. Right. And no one becomes successful alone by themselves. Who or what is the foundation of your success, Corey? Well, my mom. She's the number one thing. My mom is amazing. Uh, she always helped me along the way. Uh, she, you know, kept telling me, keep going, keep going forward. Don't give up. And also my customers too. Everyone who bought cookies from me, like they supported me a lot because they believed in me and, you know, gave money to me to, you know, make cookies and it's amazing. And he was going to okay. add his banker as well. Sorry. Yes, my banker. <laughs> <laughs> my banker. Yes, my banker's amazing too. Chase Bank. <laughs> Let's hear it for the bankers. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Alton, that's a, a question that we really would like to know. So we have everyone's listening as a business concept or they're at whatever level, where do they get access to capital? And what if their friends and family do yeah. not have capital to contribute? Well, I was going to add, I think there's a couple of things now in, in kind of the market that's easy to go to, but also there are accelerated programs. There's an angel network because there are a lot of people out there who say, okay, I want to invest in people with really interesting ideas. And the beginning of any business, you don't need millions of dollars, right? Maybe you only need 10,000, 5,000. So there's a whole angel network out there. There are accelerator programs, which I think are very interesting because you get the practical, here's how I help build a business. And many of those really successful accelerator programs will then invest in those businesses. So I think there's a whole ecosystem in my mind around entrepreneurship that never that was not there before. And so I think the ability to get resources are much easier. The harder part is obviously coming up with the right idea, but being able to explain your business in a way, and when I mean explain the business, you talk about, here's what I think my market is, here's my cost structure, Here how, here's how I'm going to make money. Those are also important aspects to getting money from any source and, and being able to articulate the value proposition. And also why, why is your business the one that's going to be successful? Is it just you? Is it uh, you have an idea? Is there a product market fit? Is there something that you see in the marketplace that is lacking that everybody is asking for? If you can articulate those reasons, it becomes easier for have people, whether it's angel, banks, whatever, fund the vision. But you got to be able to articulate all that. And you always need more money, too. You know, businesses always need more money to crowdfund and always have to also offer something. And you also have to say, hey, we need more investment. We need more loans. And because you never know, you always need something else. Corey, um, listen, we're about to wrap up, but I'm curious, is what is the Mr. Corey's brand? Is it beyond, is it cookies or beyond cookies? Well, Mr. Corey's cookies is a small, tiny thing of the Mr. Corey's brand. Mr. Corey's <laughs> brand is something that is extraordinary that we're increasing we're also going to be adding more different lines of stuff we're going to be doing we sell clothes now so we have merchandise we also you know partnered with a few companies before and had our own clothing line for a whole year um we also want to you know increase in different things we also are thinking of getting to cryptocurrency too and making our own token on the blockchain soon so a lot of new things coming out thank you and alton why is entrepreneurship 20,000 years after the first documented exchange for a, a, a product or service that's 20,000 years ago, why does entrepreneurship continue to be one of the most powerful tools towards wealth creation yeah. and financial security? Well, I mean, because one, you own the equity. It's all yours. And you have this ability to build a massive business and you get the profits from it. If you look at, I think if you look at the richest people in the world, I mean, they're all entrepreneurs, right? They all created, whether it is Bill Gates or whether it is Elon Musk, they're all entrepreneurs. And so that ability to build a legacy that lives well past you doesn't really exist in other places. I mean, nobody will say, oh, 20 years from now, Alton McDowell, who was a great banker, but they may say, Mr. Corey, I remember when he started a hundred years ago, 
And now it's this multi-million, billion dollar business. They will always refer back to Mr. Corey. So there is that legacy that you can build only through entrepreneurship. Doesn't happen any other way. And what do you pray? What do you, why do you invest so much for you? It seems like it's more than a banker, a yeah. banker relationship with Mr. Corey's cookies. There's something else going on here. And yeah. we want to know what it is. Why are you so <laughs> invested in Mr. Corey's cookies? I, I think it's a couple of things. I think it's one, it is the first time from my perspective, there's this great democratization of information that especially people of color will have access to that we didn't have access before. So I'm actually very passionate about how do I take what I've learned over these years to help young entrepreneurs, people who are not necessarily young, maybe more my age, like think through building a legacy and building a business. And maybe in some weird way, I then help build my own legacy because I'm helping someone else. And that, I think that's, you can never ask for more than that in my mind in terms of giving back. Thank you so much. And Corey, finally, as we wrap up and we begin our competition, what advice do you have for our eight finalists? Um, well, the advice I have is never give up. Um, keep focusing on your dream. Even if, you know, it doesn't always work out, you're always going to get a lot of road bumps ahead of you. Just keep focusing. Um, make sure if you ever need help, don't be afraid to ask. Always call somebody, text somebody, email somebody, and don't stress out too much because once you have a business and entrepreneurship, not a lot of people talk about it, it's very stressful and a big, like, stressful thing to have. So if you're stressed out, you know, take eat a cookie, watch some TV, <laughs> relax for a little bit, and then get back to your work. Always, you know, take your health first. Alton, there's some very um, empowering initiatives happening yeah. with Advancing Black Pathways. Could you share all that amazing resource? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, we've partnered with a coalition of really prominent Black advocacy groups that will launch what we call Advancing Black Entrepreneurs. So it's going to be an education series designated to help really Black business owner owners recover, obviously, from the pandemic. And actually, how do you move forward in this new environment? Uh, and clearly timely giving what you know what what many black uh, black owners are experiencing. So if you go to jpmorganchase.com forward slash a b e, which is again stands for advancing black entrepreneurs, you're gonna see a lot of useful information there that'll help you really navigate this, I would argue, fairly turbulent time. Excellent. Mr. Alton McDowell, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the CEO of Mr. Corey's Cookies, Mr. Corey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Alton, Corey, and Sabrina, for that enlightening discussion. Now, let's meet our four esteemed judges who have given generously of their time for this competition. Deborah Langford, who you met earlier, is the Executive Director of Business Development for J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathways Initiative. Raquel Odin is the Managing Director of the Northeast Division for J.P. Morgan Chase, overseeing their branch and wealth management teams in the tri-state area. Barry Simmons is a Managing Director and Head of the East Division for Chase Wealth Management at J.P. Morgan Chase. And Dante Stewart, is the co-founder and CFO of Underscore LLC, which connects creatives to business opportunities. Dante is also an alumnus of the World of Money Institute and currently a representative on our youth board. Hi everyone, it's Marcy Martin. I just wanted to say congratulations to all 18 teams who are the 2020 World of Money Virtual Pitch Competition finalists, sponsored by JP Morgan Chase, Advancing Black Pathways. You've been working so, so hard. And I just wanted to congratulate you on that and celebrate you all today. Good luck. Okay, it's time for the competition. For each finalist, you will see their two-minute pitch video. Then you will watch a live two-minute Q&A session between the finalist and a judge. Let's begin. Our first contestants are Caden and Nyla Liburd with their company, Liberation. Worried your dollar isn't supporting what you believe in? Pressured by your school or family to conform your opinion? Feel like you just aren't making a difference? Hi, I'm Nyla. And I'm Kaden. And together we founded Liberation. 
Liberation is a company that enables people to become informed and value-oriented consumers and people while promoting sustainability in every definition of the word. According to the 2017 Cone Communications Corporate Responsibility Study, 88% of consumers want to buy from ethical and environmentally friendly brands. 43% of consumers believe individuals present the greatest potential to solve social and environmental issues. And the U.S. sustainability market is projected to reach $150 billion in sales by 2021. Our company, Liberation, aims to tap into the sustainability market while addressing the need for consumers to make a difference with their dollar. Our vision is to create a dynamic platform that both attracts and produces informed people while having a measurable social impact. Our business will function as both an app and a website and consists of four main sectors. Liberate your mind, liberate your dollar, liberation the brand, and liberation green. Liberate your dollar features sustainable and value-oriented brands that our team researches and evaluates to ensure our credibility. Liberate Your Mind revolves around social justice issues. We envision this as a hub for information regarding social and humanitarian causes. Liberation the brand is our own line of sustainable products and apparel. Finally, Liberation Green is our environmental justice pop-up shop funded through the revenue generated by the other parts of our business. Our plan to combat environmental justice is to have Liberation pop-up centered around sustainability targeted in places hit hardest by environmental disadvantages. At Liberation, we believe that sustainability should be accessible. We will be using a subscription-based business model for both businesses and consumers. And our brand liberation, the brand will function as an online shop. We will feature certain brands for additional fees. We plan to become a B Corp, which we think will not only help us grow as a company and hold ourselves accountable to our mission, but also be able to be an integral part of our marketing strategy. We do not have any competition. No one else has created a platform as comprehensive as ours. Here we've outlined the preliminary costs it will take to start up our company to raise the initial capital. We plan to rely heavily on donors and fundraising. Liberation is about taking control of your dollar to push your values. It's about taking control of your freedom and access to information to move your community forward. Join us. Liberate, Liberate yourself. Um, one of the questions that I actually have is, what is your biggest obstacle that you face uh, essentially being the first in this market that you uh, claim to enter? I think the biggest obstacle that we face is definitely our research because we have to do a lot of extensive research because we want to come out. We want to be this authentic and really credible platform. So it's making sure like at the first time we, you know, drop our site and release it and making sure all our information is accurate so we can be trusted and have that reputation from then on. I think that's probably the most important obstacle. What do you think? Or you could also be looking at it to see like our liberation brand and you could be trying to see like if you want to buy anything from there. Or you could be thinking about if you want to buy something from somewhere else and you want to see like which brands are credible. What we think is great is that like they're all for the socially conscious and socially minded consumer. So if you're going on maybe just to find an article, chances are you're also going to go on and look at the sustainable brands and the value oriented brands. And that's kind of what we're thinking is that also some of the draw um, for brands who want to be featured on our website is that we're bringing that kind of person to, um, to their market who may not otherwise have found their brand. Okay, last question. Um, so would you say that the Liberate Your Mind, is that going to be blocked by a paywall or is someone like me who's just a casual user able to look at the articles and get information necessarily for free? Is that casual? So we're thinking casual user for free because that would help us get a lot more traffic onto the sustainable brand side. Um, because I think it, we thought like if people had to pay to get that information, they're just that might be another barrier to them finding these other brands and exploring the rest of the site. But um, we also sort of mentioned that we're going to have like a sort of premium subscription and that will include discounts to our own brand stuff, um, discount codes for the other brands that we feature. And then we'll also like curate the news. So we'll curate the articles for you based on your interest. And that'll be a part of the subscription as opposed to just your average person going on and scrolling through. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Bye. Have a good one. Good job, guys. All right. So, um, yes, liberation. Uh, how do we feel about it? Uh, personally, I feel like their business model is really exciting, um, compact. Um, those four pillars that they built themselves, their model around with the liberation of the dollar, the mind, the green, and the brand was memorable, you know, seeing it, you know, a few times over, I'm already able to have that in my head. Um, the answers that I, I mean, the questions that I gave them and the way they responded they seem to really understand their vision. Even if they didn't think about it, they had a quick answer. Uh, so I thought they did a really nice job. Look, I think there's some details that they have to continue to work on to uh, help an investor truly figure out whether or not this is scalable and yeah. sustainable. But their passion, without question, was uh, it was fantastic. They did a great job.
You know, I thought that they did the most in two minutes, in a two-minute presentation. Um, and I thought that the research they did um, was pretty impressive. And I also like that they, you know, taking control, liberate. I thought that they also had a very catchy marketing uh, aspect. They felt like business partners, although they're family members. Like, I mean, they came across as pretty professional, very tight. They had clearly done their homework. Um, they'd spent the conversation where it flowed between the two. Yes, mm -hmm. the why the really seems to be the most compact, I feel, in terms of developing yeah. the story and understanding it. Um, just fleshing out the how and making sure that they can manage all of those four pillars um, so that they can actually create that synergy within themselves is something that I think those are the details that they have to focus on more. Mm -hmm. Our next contestant is Kennedy Solaru with her company Kids Tutoring Services. Hello, my name is Kennedy Solaru. I'm a 13 year old educator, influencer, and CEO of Kids Tutoring Services. My business provides an opportunity for kids to become a global citizen and learn another language. Due to the worldwide pandemic, schools moved to online learning and students who are learning a foreign language may not have parents or peers to assist them. And that is why I started my peer-to-peer -peer tutoring services. After doing my research online, there were only adult tutoring services for kids. My business is for kids by kids. I uh, offer online classes on different platforms to accommodate everyone. I have one-on-one -on -one classes and group lessons with a minimum of two students and a max of four students. 30 minutes for $20 and 60 minutes for $30. My ideal customer will be a student from K-12 who wants to learn Mandarin Chinese and other students who are currently taking Mandarin Chinese classes. My current investors are my customer's parents. They are repaid by their child learning another language and becoming a global citizen. My services will go beyond helping students learn a language. They will prepare them for the future as a global citizen. Did you know that there's more than 1 billion speakers worldwide who speak Mandarin Chinese? I have over 10 years of experience speaking, reading, and writing Mandarin Chinese. I promote my business by the following. Social media platforms, flyers, YouTube, pitch speech contests, school listservs, family and friends, and word of mouth. To scale my business, I would need $5,000. I will use the money to pay for and maintain a professional website, a business number, a logo for my business, attending business seminars, and subscription to Zoom. Are you ready to get started? If so, please email me, info at kidstutoringservices.com. Again, info at K-I-D-S, kidstutoringservices.com. Zaijian, bye, thank you. So Kennedy, when did this idea to actually make this a business begin? Well, it started when I was in school and in my school, we have two different levels of Chinese, level one, level two, I'm in level two. And I have some peers and friends who just started learning Mandarin Chinese. So some of them didn't really feel comfortable asking the teacher with questions for homework help or classwork. So they just came to me. And I just had a lot of friends and peers asking me and I, I enjoyed it. Like, it's like helping another person. It's just amazing. And that's what really, it inspired me. I was like, I could really make a business out of this. It was interesting. How do you, how do you expect to get interest from students to want to learn Mandarin? Sometimes in my class, I have my, what I will cover in my lesson. And in my, my lessons are not like basic class lessons. My lessons are very fun. Students find interest in games and stuff like that. So I incorporate that in my learning plan so they can really be interested. Do you have enough capacity to teach when you start yes. to scale up and have a lot of interest? Yes. Okay. How do you see that? How do you, and is this going to be on the weekends or what's your time frame? Monday through Saturday is when I'm available um, in the afternoon time. So you'll, you believe that you'll be able to do these blocks and is there any limit because you'll be doing it on Zoom, right? Can you? Uh, I, yeah, on different platforms to accommodate everyone. So okay. I have, I'm going to obtain Room Central, but right now I have Google Meets, Zoom, FaceTime. Yeah, so I have those. Smart idea. And you haven't seen in terms of your competition, um, I liked that you did your research. So you haven't seen any other student to student model of teaching a uh, foreign language. Yep, I have never seen it before. Wow. Well, I, I really appreciate that you are encouraging people to be global citizens, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Outstanding. And love the background and the on theme. Thank you. All right, everybody. Kennedy and deciding she was going to be the peer-to-peer -peer mentor and teach Mandarin. I was incredibly impressed. 
from start to finish, I thought her two minute video was strong. She was very clear. She was concise. She had proof of concept. She had the, the background that was right. Um, I thought the price point was good. What did you all think? Yeah, I gotta tell you, I, I, I thought she was fantastic. I think she's really onto something because the peer to peer mentoring is, is different, right? Obviously, we have so many times it's the older children or older adults and teachers teaching the children. But I love the fact that she does that peer to peer teacher age group. And um, the only thing I got to tell her, I don't think she knows how much she has within that ability to market. So she's got to help create a stronger marketing plan because this has runway beyond um, in a big way once she learns how to uh, truly kind of sell it and market it. I felt like she was more comfortable in Mandarin than she was in English. And listening to her speak the language so comfortably, which is huge. Like, I mean, that's like unbelievable that she was more confident in Mandarin than she was when she started to speak in English. One thing that really caught my eye was she was very passionate about meeting her customers where their needs are, you know? Mm -hmm. So she wasn't limiting herself to just Zoom. And so I feel like, especially nowadays, where we are trying to pivot and be more flexible with how we conduct our business, uh, she, that's one of her passions is that she wants to make sure that it can act, it, the accessibility is there. Right. I agree. I think that she answered the, what she would do with the $5,000 to scale and she would build the website. Um, I think the only thing that she had to really figure out is her ability and the time that, yeah. it, that she's going to do that. I didn't think that was there, but that's okay because she can figure it out and maybe she can do it all day Saturdays. But I, I was uh, quite impressed. Before we continue with our outstanding contestants, let's take a look at World of Money's award-winning online course. What if I told you your child could become an educated consumer, investor, entrepreneur, and a philanthropist, all from the comfort of your laptop or mobile phone? And could learn how to manage one of the world's most powerful currencies, money. It's true. I'm Sienna. And I'm Dante, and we are both World of Money Youth Board members. I know firsthand how life-changing it is to be financially capable. When I was 11, my parents enrolled me and my siblings in the World of Money Institute, where I learned how to budget, invest, and donate my money. I first attended World of Money when I was 12. And now, like us, over 5,000 young people globally and growing, your child also can become financially educated with the World of Money online course. This award-winning financial education program is tailored for ages 7 through 21. Our course provides 160 self-guided lessons, videos, activities, quizzes, live homerooms, and scheduled town halls. During the course, your child will learn about budgeting and saving, compound interest, artificial intelligence, and so much more. Give your child the foundation for their financial security and generational wealth. Register for the World of Money online course today. Theworldofmoney.org. Developing financially responsible adults. One child at a time. Okay, our next contestants are Hiteshi Patel and Shrutika Gupta with their company, EcoX. Hi, my name is Shrutika. And hi, my name is Hiteshi, and we are the co-founders of EcoX. Research and educational facilities send 500,000 tons of plastic waste to the landfills each year from disposable plastic pipettes, which is made of low-density polyethylene plastics. These plastics have a wide variety of environmental detriments and can take 10 to even 50 years to decompose. So we came up with EcoX, which is a novel bioplastic disposable transfer pipette that serves as a replacement for traditionally used plastic labware. Our pipette is made of an innovative composition of 100% biodegradable polymers, including agar and glycerin, bringing the degradation time to only 44.2 days, thus reducing the levels of harmful waste to almost zero. Our target market is research and educational institutions. Although the labor industry is dominated by established corporations like Fisher Scientific and 3M, we believe that our unique blend of environmental sustainability and affordability gives us a competitive edge. The cost of production of one pipette is four cents. We will be selling in bundles of 500 for $55, coming to a unit price of 11 cents or a profit margin of seven cents per pipette. This is an estimate of our sales using small contract manufacturing during the first phase of production. In the second phase, after we are able to sufficiently protect our idea, we will transition to licensing out our product to maximize profits. 
Our main marketing strategies are digital, event, affinity, and industry association memberships. We strive to ensure everything remains digital and environmentally conscious to promote our green image. Rodal Money's funding would be beneficial in pushing our business through its final stages by conducting user piloting sessions and protecting our intellectual property through applying for a provisional patent. We welcome you to join us in producing affordable, sustainable labware to improve our environment, one pipette at a time. Well, welcome, and I must say, it's very impressive to see this dynamic duo of two women. So biodegradable products, um, speak to me specifically why you have a unique offering uh, that you think pharmaceutical companies would be interested in. So in our current market, we are the only biodegradable product that is being offered to pharmaceutical companies. There are other eco-friendly solutions currently being offered, but none of them are either um, in our competitor chart None of them are either 100% eco-friendly or affordable. Okay, I'm going to ask your partner this question. Tell me why is your product affordable? Is it just as what I consider strong as those that are, your competitors have? And how did you come up with the unique affordability component of it? So um, we've been doing some initial um, talks with manufacturers and um, other um, scientific laboratories. And so what really makes our product affordable is that the, the ingredients that we use specifically are very accessible, especially to uh, companies in the United States itself. Um, we would probably think about relocating headquarters if we were to go on a bigger scale. However, our affordability matches those of our closest competitors. So if you have a product that is both affordable and environmentally sustainable, it becomes a very clear alternative option. The fact that you are targeting pharmaceutical companies, the big question that will always be asked of you is your ability to scale. The way we would scale is to outsource to a third party manufacturer by entering into a manufacturing licensing agreement. So before we do that, we do have to patent our product and make sure that everything is protected completely. But by, out, by um, outsourcing to a third party manufacturer um, in which they would we would pay them a small royalty, in um, exchange for them producing our product, we will be able to scale our production up a lot while still maintaining a profit. So thank you, ladies. Great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next up, we have EcoX, um, very dynamic uh, duo of two young ladies who spoke about the importance of biodegradable labware. When they thought about pharmaceutical companies, they said they are the only ones that actually have this efficiency they, and their cost ability, right? They kept saying it's the cheapest biodegradable product out there um, and how they would approach pharmaceutical companies if they had to scale. So super impressed by both of them. I think my only opportunity for them is making the content a little bit more general user friendly that people can understand what it is. Yes, um, I feel like they have their market really down in terms of identifying who their customer was. And like you said, they sort of pitched it towards that type of customer with the method, the methodology and the numbers. They were very STEM with it. Um, um, so the fact that they're, they're sort of niching it right now with the opportunity to expand is something that interests me as an investor. Yes, it's niche, but it's one of those businesses that if it is in the right hands and grows, it could be significant. Right, like that's something that I actually would invest in. And the two of them, they felt like they were meant to be partners and work together, mm -hmm. both coming from STEM programs and the passion that they had about the product. You're hundred percent right around the, the layman being able to understand <laughs> what they're talking about, right? From an investment perspective. But when I look at some of those data points and everything that they were going, I'm confident in that investment. So uh, sign me up. I agree. I was quite impressed that they came up with a B2B thing. I was like, wow. Who, you know, they're sitting right there. Let's let's solve. And it's a problem solve. Right. Um, you know, th this is what it's doing to the environment. This is waste. And so to know how it break, broke down in such a quick way, I just I was really impressed with the uh, with their research specifically. Next, we have Josiah King with his company, Josiah, your gardening guy. Hi, I'm Josiah King, your gardening guy. I teach people how to grow and maintain healthy gardens. My customers save time, energy, and money all while eating healthy. In these times, families need to know the essentials of proper gardening. My competitors are local grocery stores, farmers, and professional gardeners. My business is affordable for the average customer, 
at cost of $10 an hour for services and low gardening kits, beginning at $7.50. Who could resist? Bronze and gold kits are at a low cost of $10 and $17. I also customize my services based off the needs of my customer. My marketing plan includes using social media, my personal website, posting yard signs in nearby neighborhoods, flyers, passing out business cards, and customer referrals. Potential investors will gain a royalty percentage in 20% based off growth revenue. To keep my service products at a low cost, I will need $5,000 for startup expenses. This money will be used for an office cost totaling at $1,580. This covers my personal sale, laptop, and color printer and supplies. Marketing and advertising is at a total of $500. I will need to travel, which is budgeted at $2,000, and a cost for gardening materials totaled at $876. I like to add miscellaneous expenses for the remaining $44. I know I will be successful with your help. Thank you for your time. And here is some water that I was growing and I'm super proud of. Right here is another beautiful one. See it? And it's growing bigger day by day. Thank you for your time. Josiah King, I love the name King. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to build and create your gardening guide. I was walking around the neighborhood and noticing that a lot of the gardens and, and a lot of the things, they were just failing. So I just decided, my mom came up with the idea, since I'm so experienced, that I could go around helping people and grow their, out their gardens and fix them or start them just from the ground. So I was like, that's a great idea. I actually really want to start that. So please tell me about this experience that you have. My experience, I basically go on, I do research about the plants. I look at my garden and I try to find out different things. And I spend hours studying on the subject. Well, wonderful. So tell me, how many gardens can you manage at one time so we can look at your profitability opportunity? I could do two a day. And I would like to do 10 gardens a week. I said, if you have one last thing to tell me, why should we pick you for the competition to be the winner? I think you guys should put, pick me because I'm, I love what I do. I'm very persistent in what I do. And when I do things, I do it not just for the money, but for the pleasure of helping people and seeing the business thrive. That is amazing. Well, thank you, Mr. King. So, Josiah King, my gardening guy, taking the concept of build you a garden. I'm not just going to cut your lawn, I'm going to build you a garden. I'm not looking to sell a big, large business, but I just want to be a local community leader. And I think about our small businesses. We need that in our society. And I think everybody's always stepping away, going for the big, grand idea that can be bought by a corporation. This truly was just a local young man he wants to be a leader in his organization to help his community. So I thought he was amazing, unique, cute, and truly just a young man um, doing what he personally can do with his own hands. <laughs> when he broke down what he would do with the $5,000 to the dollar, I was incredibly impressed. And it all aligned. I, I would, you know, I need the office space. I need marketing. I have a travel budget. This is what I need to grow. It was thoughtful. Yeah, I also loved what he said at the end. I mean, he does it because he loves to do it and it's mm -hmm. a passion of his. So he was absolutely about his dollars and he had it budgeted down and knew exactly what he needed, but he really loves to just help people. And when he said that, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that's just, uh, that's all you can ask for. He's got a bright future. Absolutely. And I think this, the smallness of it too is really indicative of that passion. You know, he's not trying to overbook himself with the customers. He really wants to take the time to make sure that each garden uh, is getting the attention that you know it needs, both with him and with the, the clients that he's gonna be working with. Um, so 
yeah, I think I think he had the the what, the why, and the and the sort of fire behind it as well that could make anybody say it's worth backing. Next up is Kiara Perkins with her company Candles by Kiara. How many of you have purchased one of those high-priced candles from Walmart or Target, lit it, and were disappointed you can barely smell anything? My name is Kiara Perkins. I am a race car driver, an author, a motivational speaker, and I'm the 13-year-old CEO of Candles by Kiara. I began Candles by Kiara after creating a candle for my dad. I wanted to do something different for Father's Day, so I took candle making videos and I made him the chocolate chip cookies and milk candle. The response from family, friends, and even social media was very overwhelming. They were surprised how the candle looked and wanted one on their own. From there, Candles by Kiara was created. Since 2018, I have scaled Candles by Kiara to include a full line of amazing scents in both candles, crumbles, and accessories. This is the chocolate chip cookies and milk candle. This is what started it all. Customers love the sweet smell of strawberry blast shake. One sniff of that's peachy and you'll be in Georgia peach heaven. Luxurious Lavender is my newest creation. I came up with a candle because I figured most people, like my mom and even myself, were looking for something soft and relaxing while we're all safe at home. I guess I was right because on the day it was released, it sold out in less than 24 hours. I use only the highest quality soy wax and infuse my candles with fragrances that will linger in your home. You'll be surprised how far the scent carries. What's best of all, you can own a candle for less than the cost of a fast food lunch. As Candles by Kiara continues to grow, I will seek investors who can provide a $7,500 loan to be repaid with interest to expand marketing, inventory, and staffing. You can visit my website at candlesbykiara.com and see what I've created. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Candles by Kiara, and Candles is spelled with a K. Being a kid myself, I like to encourage my peers and tell them that a young creative mind can grow a business and they do not have to wait till they're an adult to achieve their goals. How are you doing, Mr. Barry? I'm doing well, Kiara. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> I'd love to hear a little bit about your production. So where do you come up with the ideas for the various uh, fragrances and scents that you have? I, when I order my scents, I get a, uh, I also order little one ounce samples so I can try different candles for a different season. So it depends on the scent I order. I'll see if I can build a candle around it. That's fantastic. It sounds like you put a lot of uh, creativity and your heart into creation of these candles. That being said, it how does. much does a candle cost to create versus the price that you sell it for? And do you sell all of your candles for the same price or does it depend on how much time and effort it takes to create your candle? I see it takes five to seven dollars to make a candle. My the ones that are 15 ounces and below, those I sell those for 13, 16 ounces and above, I sell those for 15. And what is your plan for your continued growth? Where do you see this business in another two years? I want to see my candles in major stores or hopefully one day open my very own candle store. That's fantastic. Fantastic, Kira. Well, look, I wish you all the success and I can't wait to see Kira Candles with a K on the stores <laughs> as I go shopping in the future. So appreciate your time. Thank and you. All right. Well, now we're talking about Kiara's Candles with a K. So without question, <laughs> and in business since 2018, has a, a staff that helps production. And I think a lot of creativity in regards to her product and the various scents that she's able to create and truly look in the scale. And I love what she said at the end around ensuring that her uh, product would be on the shelves of many major retailers in the future. So uh, love to hear what your thoughts are. My thought would be she had the energy, she had the poise. Um, she absolutely could pitch her idea. Um, I think on the standpoint of what was very honest, she's like, well, my mom actually tracks the details. I am the visionary. I make the product and I passionately tell everybody what's going on with it, and what makes it special. I absolutely loved her branding behind her. So even in the presentation itself, it wasn't a virtual background. Like you saw right. the right. physical like branding poster that she's put together. I thought she did a great job. I think her mom's her business partner and that works too. And I support that. 
the ideas behind those candles were so creative. Like it's very unique, something that I could see very Instagrammable um, and social media, like picture worthy, which I think in a digital age is very important. You know, her profit margins too, from what she's saying, for how much it costs going yeah. into the way she, the, num- the number of uh, the price points that she's selling them at, I think are very, would make any investor happy. I like that she mentioned the competition. She said, you know, other candles, you can't even smell them. You know, my candles, you can smell them. And so I thought that she did the the uh, research and the competition. And I also like that she had a proof of context uh, concept because she said that she sold out when she first introduced the candles. So uh, she's already saying, I know that there is a market for my candles. Before we move on, we want to let you know about our World of Money app. is Tommy Nicole Crump with her business, Tommy's Tales. My name is Tommy Nicole Crump, and I love to dance, spend time with my dog, and read. And today, I'm representing my brand, Tommy's Tales, a YouTube channel where I read bedtime stories to little ones because I believe every little person deserves a great bedtime story. Tommy's Tales is simple and original. I read award-winning stories with powerful messages and lessons to little people who may not always be lucky enough to have someone to read to them. Sadly, statistics have shown that if you are not a reader by third grade, you will never become one. So here I am with Tommy's Tales to help create lifelong readers. As I build on my brand, I'm learning the business side of things. And although the reading portion is free, all the other things to build literacy skills are not. I need investors in order to provide each subscriber with a t-shirt, mini library, and bookmarks that total about $15 per person. This way, my subscribers can take reading to the next level on their pathway to success. Investors will be repaid once I begin to sell personalized recorded books. As far as competitors are concerned, I'm happy to have them. That just means there are more opportunities for little ones to learn. However, the difference between me and them is that I deliver with love. My stories are way more personal and I bring myself to Tommy's Tales. I am a great mentor and very good at relationship building at only the age of 14. Please help me to help others. Thank you so much for listening and good luck to all the other competitors. You are already winners in my book. Hi, Tommy. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I am doing well, doing well. Hey, I love your business and most importantly, your purpose around helping people read and your conversation around bring on the competition because that really truly helps more folks uh, in their ability to read. Who inspired you? Where did that come from? Because it's such a noble purpose. Uh, it really is refreshing to see that. Well, who inspired me to like continue on with this was probably my mom mostly and all the younger kids that I was reading to because they just loved hearing my story so much. It just like pushed me to continue on with it. Great, great. And you had mentioned, uh, you know, again, the reading is free, but you're uh, going to be selling some of the paraphernalia, the t-shirts, the subscription model. Tell us a little bit more about the subscription model that you're thinking about and the membership. I'm curious as how you are going to sustain your long-term revenue. Well, I do keep track of like most of like who my subscribers are. 
And what I want for each subscriber to have is a Tommy's Tail shirt. And if they want it personalized, they can have it personalized. And I want to also supply them with like um, all the award-winning stories that I read, well, most of them if I could. Um, and I have like a bookmark with like my logo and everything on it. And I want everyone to have that in like a mini library. Well, that is fantastic. I wish you the best of luck and continued growth in your business. Well done. Okay. All right. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts were on Tommy. I just thought that I love how she's passionate around helping people learn to read the statistics that she shared around learning by third grade and the chances for that continued literacy. I thought that was fantastic. And on the business side, although that passion and the purpose is fantastic, but she actually has a subscription model plan where she can truly make that sustainable and recurring revenue, which I thought was unique amongst all the presenters uh, because that absolutely is an opportunity for an investor to have that recurring uh, income. So I thought that was, uh, that was terrific as well as just the, the noble purpose of what she's trying to accomplish in her business. Okay, Tommy, honest to goodness, I was over the pitch because I was <laughs> this woman is not playing. Absolutely. I think um, one of the ways she was one of the few contestants where when she started speaking, I could relate it to something that exists, like those box subscription companies. And I was like, wow, those do really well. Um, and that's something that's actually really popular now. And I think that her price point and the model that she has behind it, on, on top of her passion and her drive to be uh, a real entrepreneur, uh, is something that I could, you know, certainly see myself getting back, backing herself behind. So she said, "I can acknowledge the competitors, you know, but my my perspective is unique." I and and she really grounded it with the importance about reading. Um, and I again, I I loved how she closed um, in her video. You know, the nice comment about I wish all of the competitors something great, and I thought. You know, what, what a great entrepreneurial spirit. Next, let's hear from Anaya Henry and her company, Ash Organics by Anaya. Hi, I'm Anaya Henry. I'm 16 years old and I'm the creator of Ash Organics by Anaya, where I sell organic handmade hair and skincare. Now, I understand all my other competitors in this competition provide great products and services. However, I've created every component of my business by myself at home. All the ingredients that I use are organic, and I ensure to use at least one Ayurvedic herb in each product. Ayurveda is a system used in the Indian culture used to benefit the mind, body, and soul. Many Ayurvedic herbs like Moringa and Amla have nutrients such as zinc, calcium, and phosphorus used to nourish the hair follicles and skin cells. I actually started my business because of the journey that I went through at such a young age. At 9 years old, I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. However, at 10, I had my bone marrow transplant, so I am now better. After my hair started falling out, I wanted to learn how to make it grow back faster, which led me to finding out about Ayurveda and hair growth. Once I became more advanced, I added skincare. If you are a person who has issues with constant dry hair and skin like me, my products provide supple, hydrated, and healthy hair and skin. My product costs between $1 to $4 to make, so we price each product at $10, giving customers an affordable and agreeable price, while still giving the luxury feel. I market through Instagram, Instagram ads, and pop-up shops. Consistency is key to growth with marketing. Ash Organics would be able to pay back potential investors through the earned revenue. If I were to win first, second, or third place, I would be able to expand my advertising, buy a website, and buy more ingredients to make more products. I'm only on Instagram, and although Instagram is a popular social media platform, not everybody has Instagram. A website would be more accessible, however, it's not free. I would also be able to ship internationally, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity once again. All right, Anaya, kudos to you. So how long does it take for you to make the products? Um, well, it takes about four, three or four hours because I have to, I have to melt the butters down and the butters are kind of thick. So that takes some time. And then it has to go into the freezer for about 40 minutes. And then whipping it takes 20 minutes to soften it up. And then putting it in the jars takes some time and then labeling it takes some time. 
You said that you're on Instagram and that's how you've been able to promote your product. And so what other type of marketing ideas do you have so that you have a, a wide range for people to know about your product? Well, there's other social media apps that I can use, but I don't use them at the moment. And I can also purchase my own website if I was if I was able to win. Perfect. Is there an audience that you think is ideal to you? I would say around my age, which is 16 to probably around uh, 70, I guess, 70 years old. It's a product that everyone can use. I'm not sure about um, younger kids yet, but I would say around my age, 16, 15 to older. Okay. Well, let me say this. Congratulations to you for turning a situation into an amazing opportunity and something, the product that, that has great benefits and I am looking forward to the ability, I'm gonna go find your IG page. I'm looking forward to the ability to buy the products immediately. So congratulations. Thank you. A young woman decides that she has endured a challenge in health and she figures out something that is a remedy. She's done her research on the competitors. She's got a price point that was cost me one to $4 cost, the $10 price. It was reasonable price. She explained all of it. What did you all think? I think she's very resilient. I think to your point, the price point was great. Um, I think competitively, she's got to figure out how to brand that story on there. Cause I think that's, what's making it special. And like you said, once you heard her story, you're like, send me 10 boxes. You were in. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the essence of an entrepreneur, you see an issue and you figure out a way to solve it and fix it. And that's exactly what she did on the business side. Her profit margins were fantastic. I think that's tremendous. Uh, and now I think um, just long term with the right investment, being able to get a staff and get a process to, to promote as well as create enough product because she's definitely going to have demand. Having the bravery to just demo your product as well in your pitch, I feel is something that really set her apart as well. Like not only was she going to tell you about the product and give you the story and prove she was willing to prove it and put it on herself. I also thought she answered the questions extremely well. And when I asked her about the audience, when she said 16 to 70, which I thought was very thoughtful and, and, and very, what I call politically correct of how to handle that situation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Our final contestant is Alexa Mitchell with her company, Know Me by Noelle Michael. Hello, my name is Alexa Noelle Mitchell, the 10 year old founder of Know Me by Noelle Michael, a health and wellness company. The Know Me brand is different because we only create healthy products that inspire everyone to know yourself. Get it? Know Me? Our first product is a toxin free nail polish and remover made right here in the United States. I've always loved getting my nails painted as a little girl. As I grew older, I found out that most nail polishes contain co toxic chemical that can make your nails weak and brittle. We sell our healthy nail polishes at our website, knowmeproducts.com and our Etsy site for $9.99. We market our products on social media like Facebook and Instagram to women and girls like me. If an investor gave me $5,000, I would purchase more Know Me nail polish and close more deals. We plan to use our money from our sales to pay the investors back. Thank you for getting to know the Know Me brand. Our nail polish is healthy for you, looks great on the outside, and makes you feel awesome in the inside. Thank you. So how's it going? Good. I loved your presentation. Your uh, passion and the breaking news was really eye-catching. Um, and so I just wanted to know what sort of really inspired you to get into this uh, business for health and wellness specifically. So because when I was younger, I loved painting my nails. Um, 
But then when I was older, I found out that most nail polishes contain had toxic chemicals. So I wanted to fix that. All right. Um, and how much does it cost to actually make your product? Three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah. Okay. That's and then you sell them for nine ninety nine. So that's a good profit margin. Uh, what's the most popular nail polish that uh, line that you sold so far? Yes, it is this red right here. Okay. Confident Chris Crimson. Mm -hmm. What actually inspires you to create these lines and the names for these lines? Well, we did positive words for the colors. And if you were given, you know, the $5,000, how exactly would you use those $5,000 to um, expand or grow your business? Where do you see it going from here? Well, I would buy more products and after that, I would pay the investors back. Would you use the money maybe to start your marketing campaign as well to get the reach out? Yeah, um, yes. We'll be launching soon though. All right, well, I look forward to the launch and um, I hope to hear more about it. Yes, so Alexa Nomi, um, yeah, I, I want to hear a lot about your guys' thoughts in terms of um, her pitch and the way the questions went. I um, really liked the fact that she's doing something that is sustainable, um, mm -hmm. ensuring the uh, health of her skin or nails uh, and ensuring that, you know, they're durable and not brittle. Um, I think she, took, she did her research in making sure that it's not toxic. Um, and that was something that impressed me. So, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I, I think her uh, her video was very creative, uh, and her pitch was was very well orchestrated. And the, the breaking news, and to your point around just the care and the research she's taken mm -hmm. about nail polish and some of the damage that it does to nails if it's not the right quality and ingredient, I thought that was great. I think that the uh, the colors and the positivity in the naming and the branding that she had for every polish, I thought that was fantastic as well. So, Okay, y'all, she was 10 years old. She had a physical product line in front of you. She showed you nail polish. It wasn't a concept. I looked at her age compared to all the other contestants um, and the viable product she just showed us with clear colors and there was actual nail polish. So I was pretty impressed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. You know what I loved about her presentation was the graphics. You know, she had the hearts and it really felt well produced. Um, so I think she was a very thoughtful about that. Again, at 10, I, I can't concept that. <laughs> right, at 10, right? She was, that, that concept. And I will tell you, I think that she had grace under under pressure. She answered the questions. She had the product. I think that really showed um, leadership, right? She's miles ahead from where I was at 10. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Great job all around. Hard. It's going to be hard to pick some winners on this one. That's I don't want to do, you know, it's so nice that we're on Zoom because if we were all together, we would be in a knockdown, drag out. <laughs> that would be it, okay? We would be wrestling. <laughs> While the scores are tallied for these awesome entrepreneurs, let's learn about JP Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Pathways initiative. When we come back, we will announce the winners of the 2020 World of Money Online Youth Business Pitch Competition. This country is a land of opportunity. There's just a group of people in this country who have not been afforded the opportunity yet. Advancing Black Pathways has been started by J.P. Morgan Chase. We put together a council to really focus on three areas of concern for black people in this country. Wealth, education, and careers are actually intertwined. They have to be considered simultaneously. If you can solve the problem, and it is a problem, about the lack of black wealth, you can move the needle on a lot of issues in not just the black community, but in America as a whole. Part of those pillars is the advisory board, right, of people that come from different walks of life, and that have figured out ways to break through in each of those ways, now getting together to collectively think through how to bring this breakthrough. 
The numbers are very, very clear. For every $100 that a white American has in wealth, African Americans have $5. So there are these wealth gaps that exist that ultimately lead to less economic prosperity for the black community. As a person that came up with nothing, um, and there was a bunch of people just like me that didn't ask, didn't know, didn't care. I got to a point in my life where I was around people who gave information that I never knew existed. So advancing black pathways is giving people understanding. We now have a well-resourced organization that is intentional, that is building pillars underneath that intention so that these intentions can be executed. Calling it Black Pathways, we're very clear. This is about black people and we're going to advance the multiple pathways in which they can be successful and actually grow well for black people. Okay, the moment we've been waiting for. Drum roll, please. In third place, winning $1,000 is Ash Organics by Anaya, founded by Anaya Henry. Congratulations, Anaya. Okay, next up is second place, winning $3,000. Let me see the envelope here. Okay, it's Liberation, founded by sisters Kaden and Nyla Liebert. Congratulations, Kaden and Nyla. Okay, okay, now the winner. The first prize of $5,000 in World of Money's 2020 Youth Business Pitch Competition Online is, wait for it, Wait for it. Ecolax, founded by Hiteshi Patel and Tritika Gupta. Congratulations. Wasn't this amazing? Congratulations to our 2020 winners and all of our visionary entrepreneurs. Follow them on social media and support their businesses. On behalf of the World of Money Organization, I thank our judges, the Leadership Council, and the team at J.P. Morgan Chase Advancing Black Pathways. Welcome and thank you for joining me in the World of Money's Winner Circle, where we're going to meet our top three competition winners. Wasn't this exciting? But first, another round of applause, hands in the air for all of our finalists. They have already received global exposure, but will also will receive business marketing mentoring from Hoverfly and Five hundred dollars in cash so first up coming in the winner circle is the one thousand dollar third place winner anaya henry ceo of Hi. ash organic hi, Hello, how, are anaya. You hi. Good. Thank I'm good. You. how are you <laughs> i'm very happy how i was very feel? shocked when i found out because Why it just stopped, took a darling? lot of work and all that work paid off. Yes. And tell us about the most challenging aspect of pre uh, preparation for that was the competition. Um, I would say for business. the competition was just getting the two minute videos and trying to get everything in and about my business. And then for for my business itself, I would say um, talking to other people and getting myself out there is also a challenge. And what do you say to other young people who say, oh, it's so hard, I can't do it, I, why should I do it? You, I mean, yeah. it grows above a lot of challenges. I would say never why? to give up and it's never impossible. It's never impossible. It's never impossible, Anaya. Well, congratulations once again. We're super duper proud of you. Thank you so much. See you again and welcome to Thank the you. World of Money community. 
You're welcome. Anaya's products are excellent. They're birthday, Christmas gifts for any occasion. I'm placing my order and so should you. Now, next coming to the stage are our $3,000 second place winners, sisters Nyla and Kaden Lyberg, CEOs of Liberation. Welcome. Welcome, Hi. Kaden and Nyla. <laughs> Great. So excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be happy about it for sure. Yes. Are you happy about it or are you happy about it? I'd say it's, it's over? a little bit of both. We're kind of <laughs> yeah. in the middle. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. What did you learn about your sisters? What did you learn um, about? I each learned other? that Kaden works very hard. She has a really good work ethic doing this. She never really worked on a project like this together, which is really good. I found out she's really good to work with. She's a really good partner. Um, I would say that for Nyla as well. And then I can just trust her because before I would always be like, oh, like, don't mess up. But now I'm like, you can do this. Like, you're equipped. You have the knowledge. You have the skill. So I definitely a lot more trust. Why this mission? You could have said we're gonna create a sock business or yeah, a lipstick business. Not to not to denigrate those businesses <laughs> because I got a lot on. But why? Um, well, I think mission? for both of us, now you can answer as well. <laughs> is we sort of we like to think for the now, but also for the future. Um, and we think about you know that a lot. What we want our lives to be like, what we want the world to be like, what we want our relationships to be like in the future. Um, and you know, sustainability is sort of encapsulates all of that. So yeah, um, I would. That's right. Yeah, That's I would agree. Right. Say like the biggest challenge right yeah. now. One of the biggest Please. challenges is making sure that we have a world that we can see in the future. And I think sustainability is a great way to make sure that we can like maintain our lives in the future. Have a have a world, right? What is the next step in the business? Okay, you have the three thousand dollars. <laughs> By the way, can I borrow twenty dollars, please? What's so next? I would say what's, what's next is budgeting and really outlining the specific areas, how we're going to use that cash so we can make the best of it so that um, we can yeah. make it last and we can make yeah. those first moves as a company purposeful. Yeah. Purposeful. I love that. Well, congratulations once again. I can't wait to purchase eco-friendly yes. brands from Liberation's website. You're treasured members of the World of Money community. Nyla, Caden, what is the Word, World of Money earn, motto? Save, invest, invest donate. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> See you again uh, soon. Congratulations. So last but not least is our $5,000 first place winner. Patel and Pratika Gupta, CEOs of Eco. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. We're so excited. <laughs> well, congratulations. I asked uh, our other finalists, why did this particular mission resonate so closely with you two? You could have picked something else. So well, I guess as this, oh, go ahead. I'll go ahead, Shitia. <laughs> so the reason that this really resonated with us, and I think some other finalists mentioned this as well, is that this is going to be our world when we grow up. Um, it's going to be our world. It's going to be our kids' world. We really want to make sure that our world is plastic-free, is a great place to grow up in, which is why we chose to go the sustainability route. Wow. And what did you learn about yourselves? This um, as aspiring business professionals and I guess committed students, we just learned that um, it really it takes a lot of work and um, it's a lot of dedication al along the way. But um, it's definitely worth it once you get there. Um, and we just learned to kind of be ourselves and really show our passion for what we do. But you know what? You, you could have chosen not to do this. You could have said, well, I'm just going to be on video games this afternoon. Why challenge ourselves? Why why do that? Uh, Kaden and Nyla use the word purposeful. Why live a purposeful life through entrepreneurship? 
Oh, okay. Um, so the reason that we chose to uh, go purposefully and live a purposeful life is to create a legacy that we can leave on the world. Um, I think Hitachi and I would both agree that the reason that we grow up is always to make the world a better place and to always improve upon what we're currently living through, like the current world that we're living on. So that's the reason that we want to be purposeful is just to make a mark and create an outstanding impact. And how will you use the $5,000 for your business? What's the next step? The next step for us is definitely um, through both product development and user testing, just those two main main points. Because of the pandemic, obviously, we haven't been able to engage in as much of that. And we just we really need the support to really just take our product to the next level and kind of bring it to the market as soon as possible. Yay! Thank you. And welcome to the world of money community. I don't know about you, but I and the World of Money organization, we're so hopeful and inspired for our future. Thanks so much for tuning in to the fifth annual World of Money Youth Business Pitch Competition produced by our amazing Leadership Council and Kelly Lutchman of Lightfellow Productions. I hope that you were inspired and had as much fun as we did. Until next year, everyone, remember the World of Money developing financially and entrepreneurial children, adults, one child at a time. I'm Sabrina Lamb, live long and 